teams of professional surfers are poised in Mexico, one off the coast of Baja and the other deep in the mainland, ready to tow into some of the most challenging waves in the world. What makes it so much fun is that every trip you go on, you are searching for that wave, but you have so much more to look forward to as well. Chuck Patterson and Scott Chandler have learned to make themselves at home in Puerto, taking in more than just its famous waves. You know, I come here and I eat great food and you meet really great people on the way. You know, I feel like a tourist half the time because I, you know, take my camera out and I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. Word of the big swell travels fast through a small town like Puerto, as tourists and locals alike find their way down to the beach to watch the front runners. The world's most epic big waves earn their fearsome reputations not merely on size, but on degree of difficulty. You know, that's what people are fooled by. So many people think, oh, where's the biggest waves in the world? But it's not necessarily the biggest. It's, it's how thick they are. It's how they hit the reef. It's all those other challenges. Porto Escondido, you'll get waves that are probably 30 feet high on the face, maybe on its biggest day, 40 feet on the, on the biggest south swell of the year. Oh! At a place like Todos, you'll get waves up to 70 feet tall on the face, maybe even a little bit bigger than that. The characteristics of a wave depends primarily on the unique undersea geography of each location. A beach break has a completely different personality than a reef break. Toto Santos is a, is a reef break, a deep water wave. Porto Escondido is a beach break, um, which is all sand bottom. Traditionally, a, a sand bottom wave, the waves are going to be much taller and much more challenging to get in and out. Obviously, a reef break, you know, you think of the bathymetry, the ocean bottom that makes a wave break on a reef. It tends to be organized. It tends to be uniform. A beach break, it's more of a free-for-all. There's sandbars that build up. They can change by the day. They can change by the hour. You actually are pulling into a 30-foot wave behind a section and riding through the tube. You're gone from sight for up to five to maybe even on the greatest ride of your life, 10 seconds. You know, and it's breathing and hissing in there, and it's, um, it's incredibly challenging. At Port Escondido, you have 30-foot waves pounding on the sand. You've got to paddle right out into the lion's den. The waves can shift, the position can shift. You can be sitting in the lineup one second, and then it'll shift and you'll get a 20-foot closeout in your head. If riding Puerto is about surviving the tube, then riding killers is all about surviving the drop. Waves like Waimea, Mavericks, the, the, you know, Piahi, most of those waves, they're primarily about the drop. It hits the reef, which is just a few feet under the surface, and there's like a big, uh, deep canyon out in front of it, so it magnifies all the swell, and it grows really, really tall. And it's straight up and down on the face. Um, it's really a lot like Waimea Bay in Hawaii, where it's, um, it's, it's a great big giant drop. And on the right day, there's a, a decent wall in front of you. And then you kick out into, into a channel, where it's, you're actually very safe just a few feet away. Just before dawn, the storm swell that Chuck and Scott have chased all the way from Southern California finally begins to arrive. This place, just from up here, you can hear the surf. So when it gets big, the whole two mile stretch of beach down here is just rumbling all night long. You can just feel it shake and hear the thundering, the pounding hear it and you know and it's dark and, and you know it's going to be giant. You might want to put your earplugs on because we do have to put it loud <laughs> because they are sound sleepers. I don't know what the volume we're going to use today. Go 
time. Oh boy. Come on, boys, let's go. Hey, I went down to the beach already. The tide came all the way up the road. The waves are gone. Let's get the cameras ready. Let's go, boys. Rise and shine. Here we go, all over again. Just as in 2006, the storm has delivered seriously big surf to Puerto. Oh, see Charlie, though. Charlie. But the guys won't know what type of conditions they'll face today until they get down to the beach, where the rising sun will just be hitting the surf. I should have gotten probably a little bit more sleep, but um, we're not here to sleep. We're here to get big waves. I two shots of tequila, boys, because it's going to be big Chocolate and peanut butter are my favorite. So now, the good stuff, desitin. First choice of pediatricians for diaper rash. Looks like war paint. From the sound of the ocean pounding the beach below Diddy City, there's no doubt that the swell has made landfall, and the guys are anxious to lay eyes on the surf. Oh, really? 30, 40 foot. Just like last time. Uh -huh. Oh, there's some toilet paper for you. Just, uh -huh. just in case you guys get scared. <laughs> we got some toilet paper. See you guys down there. As morning breaks in Puerto Escondido, Chuck and Scott begin to see the first signs of a major swell event. You can see mist. See the mist? Yep. Oh, look at that set. Wow. We get this mist that just covers the, the air from from the high surf. Oh, look at the water. It came right up the ramp yeah. right here. See how far the water came up? All the way up to the road right here. Unreal. Almost across the street. Up next on Wave Chasers, when Killers comes alive. I had my worst injury in my life surfing out there. I had a huge wave go through my knee and through my board and tore my whole knee apart. 